James isn't sleeping anymore, so I don't have to be quiet, but he can lay there with Spanky. While I talk to you about the most important question you've never asked us. delicious water. It's high quality H2O. This water is so good. Oh, where do we get our water, do you ask? Fancy that. Where do you pee? Where do you shower? Where do you sleep? Those are the top three questions that we've been asked, but no one has ever asked us where we get our water. which is kind of surprising considering water's probably the most important thing that you need to survive. I mean, other than oxygen. And to be fair, there have been a couple of people who have asked us that, literally a couple. We're gonna tell you how we get our water. How do we get our water, Zoe? Thankfully, we live in the greatest country in the world, Canada. <laughs> Virtually every citizen has access to clean, free water, well not f totally free, but clean water, it's very accessible, that comes just out of their taps. Now obviously we're not hooked up to anything, so that's why people should be asking, well where the hell are you gonna get your water? Now I also wanna be clear that while virtually every Canadian citizen has access to clean accessible water, there are people, a lot of them, who don't. Now there are indigenous reserves who have had boil water advisories for over a decade. That's right, that means that they don't have access to clean, delicious, safe water to drink coming out of their taps. Normally we think about stuff like that happening in countries other than our own. Places where they have poor infrastructure or wars going on and don't have the technological capabilities to allow for clean water to happen in, for all of their citizens. Does that surprise you that Canada is one of them? It does for me. However, the area we live in, there's lots and lots of clean, accessible water, and we're gonna tell you where we get it. First, let's talk about where we get water in the van. If you haven't seen our video van tour, I will link to it. Under here, we have two jugs that are 26 liters. We have a 12 volt, 200 gallon per hour bilge pump that we flick the switch on from the solar system, and everything's off grid. And then we have our water pump. Okay. Delicious water. And also works as an outdoor shower. Usually, we'll use our water bottles. So we have our Nalgene and these awesome thermos, they're insulated camelbacks. We take these with us everywhere. So when we go to the gym, when I'm at work, when we're at somebody's place, we fill these up there's three of them and that's what we use for most of our water washing drinking cooking these things are quite big smoothieing that's cooking no smoothieing this is what we use for most of our water which means that we don't have to use that as often as you would use water in your house. And the beauty is we don't have to fill them up all that often. One canister actually probably lasts us over a month, which is pretty good. I know that still doesn't really totally answer where we get our water, our main source of water for the van. We've still been looking at a few places and one person actually suggested some of those commercial fill sites. You know, you drive up your truck and they pump in a bunch of water. But those are mostly for places that they have those big tanks and the thing comes in. So we haven't really found a place where we have residential fill up stations where you can just go with a jug and just fill it in that way. One of the places that we found was actually the cemetery. My dad's buried there so I have full right to be there and they have fill-up stations where you can fill up stuff to go water your plants. When I go water my dad's garden, we've gone and filled up those things as well. Hey, buddy. But it really does make you think the accessibility of the water that we have here and how we take it for granted. We had to think about it. How much water do we actually use? 
how much water do we actually need? On our day-to-day -day basis, we've been really calculative, if that's a word, about how much water we use for each particular task. James more than me. Cognizant. <laughs> Cognizant? Mm -hmm. We've been very cognizant of how much water we use to the milliliter for certain tasks. And it's amazing how little water you actually need. Every time like I brush my teeth or I wash my face now when I'm in the van and I, and I use so little water, I think about when I lived in a house and how I would just leave that tap running, not consciously, uh, you know, just kind of forget about it or how much water you would actually use rinsing your face and doing all that stuff compared to what I would do now. And that's not to say that we have it all figured out. We are still learning and figuring out what's the best way that we can use the least amount of water, but still obviously enjoy the lovely things that we love to enjoy. So we're definitely not shy on water. We're never thirsty. I'm never any, you know, anything like that, but I definitely use a heck of a lot less water than before. The other point I want to do is yes, we are still dependent on the system. Our water system is not completely off-grid. We'd love it to be and that's actually something we've been working on to try and figure out what's a way that we can maybe collect rainwater, bring it into the van, some sort of system to be able to do that um, would be really really cool if we could figure that out or if somebody else could. James, do you have something important you want to tell our viewers? Like, subscribe thing. Don't forget to like and subscribe the buttons and things <laughs> and the technology and the apps. We don't have an app. Uh, it's a Facebook app. Oh, Instagram yes. Instagram app. Yeah. And the other app. You're so good on camera. I'm amazed you're not a famous actor. Like and subscribe, man. Cool.